Number six, write a balanced equation describing each of the following chemical reactions. And we have letter A. They're saying that solid potassium chlorate, which is KClO3, decomposes to form solid potassium chloride and diatomic oxygen gas. Okay, so they basically told us a reaction in, you know, in English, right? But we need to write it in terms of a balanced chemical equation. So we just have to watch out for our context clues and the wordings that they use in order to get our balanced equation. So I'm going to start from left to right. So the first thing that it says, it says solid potassium chlorate, which is KClO3. So they were nice. They gave us a formula decomposes. Okay. So what's going on here? It seems that KClO3 is breaking down. That's what decomposing is, right? Decomposed matter is just broken down matter. So it, KClO3 is breaking down. It's changing, right? So the starting material was KClO3. Over time, it decomposed, it broke down. So my reactants or the left side is KClO3, right? And they told me that it was a solid. So I'm just going to put my state here. S stands for solid. Now, since it's doing something and you're showing, or you're going to be showing, what it breaks down into, right? It's going to break down into potassium chloride and oxygen gas. You need to show that with an arrow. This is called a yield sign. It basically is, this sign tells you that this will produce this over time. In this case, we could say that KClO3 broke down into its components, because that's what you know a decomposition reaction is. But now, what is it going to form? Well, it says it forms solid potassium chloride. Now, they weren't nice. They, they didn't tell us what this compound was, but we know from like chapter two, we know how to write formulas from a name, right? Potassium chloride. Potassium is on group one of the periodic table, right? It's K. And since it's a group one, it has a plus one charge. Chloride is in group... 17 or 7A, right? It's chlorine and chlorine has a negative one charge, right? Use those charges to crisscross to tell you how many of each you have, right? So this one crisscrosses down telling you that I have one chlorine. And then the same thing goes for this one. This crisscrosses down telling you that you have one potassium, but it's a one-to-one. -one, so I can't break that in, down that any further. So my compound would just be KCl, and KCl is potassium chloride. They told me that it's a solid, so I'm just going to say S. And now I move on to the next thing. They said that it's going to form solid potassium chloride and, so literally addition, right, and plus, plus, diatomic oxygen gas. In chemistry world, di means two. Atomic means atoms. So you have two atoms of oxygen. And oxygen is an O, right, on the periodic table. So I have oxygen, but I have two atoms of it. So it's O2. And they tell me the state, so it's a gas. So I put a G. G stands for gas. Now, that is your equation. However, is that the balanced equation? Could be. But we always want to double check. So anytime that you write an equation, or if they give you an equation, like on a quiz or an exam, just take two seconds to see if it's balanced. Because you can't do any math, any stoichiometry, without balancing the equation. The equation has to be balanced. So that's super, super, super important. Okay. So you can do the chart just like we've been doing um, before. There's many videos on this, so go check them out where I break it down in a chart method, but we want to be quicker with balancing. So I'm going to kind of do like a, a different version of just trying to look at this and see if I can balance it. So I have one potassium on the left. I have one potassium on the right. So that's technically balanced. 
I have one chlorine on the left. I have one chlorine on the right, so technically that's balanced. But when it comes down to the oxygen, I have three oxygens here, and I have two oxygens here. They are not balanced. But one is a three, and one is a two. Can I multiply one one of the numbers to get to the other number, right? Can I multiply three by a whole number to get to two? No. And can I multiply two to get to three? No. So what's the next common number that is between a three and a six? Oh, if you multiply three times two, it will get you six. Six is the common number between a three and a two. And that's going to kind of tell you what the coefficient you have to add in front. Three times what will get me six? Oh, three times two will get me six on the left-hand side or the reactant side. Two times what will get me six? Oh, in this case, I have to multiply it by three. Three times two is six. And now the oxygens are balanced. But however, since I added this two coefficient in the front, now I have two potassiums and two chlorines. So I have to just be careful. How many potassiums and chlorines do I have here? I only have one. There's no coefficient. So if I have two over here, how many would I need on this side? I would need two. So I put A, two coefficient. And now everything is balanced. This is your balanced equation. That's it, guys. What do you think? Let me know in the comments if this helped you. Give it a like if it did. And subscribe to the channel if you want more chem videos coming your way. We have math videos. We got physics videos. So go check those out if you need help in those subjects as well. I hope to see you in the next lesson. Have a great day and keep studying hard. Okay, guys, you got this. I'll see you all in the next lesson. Bye-bye.